Hi, I'm Miss Cornwell, and I teach third grade at Arbor Heights Elementary. I'm so glad you're here to join me for another week of reading comprehension lessons. Last week, we read three opinion articles, and we talked about the important ideas in each of those articles. And this week, we're going to continue our work with determining or identifying important ideas. If you didn't watch last week's lessons, that's okay too. We'll work together to get you caught up. For today's lesson, you will need a few different materials. The first thing you'll need is this week's learning packet. You may have gotten this sent to you by your teacher. You can also find it on the Seattle Public Schools website. If you don't have your learning packet, you might use your student response book if you happen to have that at home, or just a piece of scratch paper or a notebook, kind of like the one that I'm going to use today, would be just fine too. You'll also need a pen or pencil to write, and you'll need a turn and talk partner. If there's someone at home watching this video with you, that would be a great turn and talk partner. Could be a mom, a dad, a, a grandparent, a sibling, a cousin, someone who's there at home with you. If you normally talk to this person in a language other than English, you're welcome to have your discussions in that language. If you don't have someone watching this video with you, you could turn and talk to a pet, a stuffed animal, or you can just think about the answers in your head. Take a few moments to gather those materials and then we'll get started. So as I explained before, last week we were working on finding the important ideas in opinion articles. Determining or identifying important ideas is a great way to help you understand and remember what you read. It's what we call a reading comprehension strategy. And you've learned lots of reading comprehension strategies already this year. As a quick reminder, we've practiced visualizing, making inferences about characters by using clues, wondering and questioning, and using text features, especially, especially in expository nonfiction. Now, let's add one more to our list of reading comprehension strategies. This one is determining or identifying important ideas. Good readers use these reading comprehension strategies as they read independently. And so that's the goal for you to do as you do your IDR. Today, we'll continue to practice determining important ideas by reading this book, Lifetimes. It's written by David L. Rice and illustrated by Michael S. Maydak. It's published by Dawn Publications. This book is a nonfiction book that tells about the lifetimes of different plants, animals, and other organisms. A lifetime is how long a plant or animal or organism is expected to live. For example, the lifetime of a human is about 85 years. We'll read about a couple different animals today, and we'll start by reading about army ants. Now, before I read about a nonfiction topic, I like to get myself ready to read by thinking about what do I already think I know about this topic? So I'm going to ask myself that now. What do I think I know about ants? Well, I think I know that they live together in really big groups. I think they're called colonies. And I've seen them before walking in lines, and I think they do that to go find food to bring back to their colony. Let's see as we read now, I can pay attention to if I find out that I was right about those things and what else I'm learning about ants. Now, as I read this passage, this one we're just going to read one time. So there's two things to think about. The first thing is, what am I learning about army ants am I, as I read? The second one is, what do I think the author most wants me to understand and remember about army ants? Or, what is an important idea in this passage? A 
A lifetime for an army ant is about three years. Army ants are famous for their ability to work together to accomplish amazing things. They march along like soldiers, sometimes a million at a time. Nothing can stop them. When they come to our river, they make an ant bridge of themselves to get across. If the river is very wide, they form large ant balls and float to the other side. Army ants eat mostly insects, spiders, and small animals, although they have been known to eat horses, cows, and even tigers that are tied up or caged. People who live in areas with army ants have to leave their homes for a day or two when the ants come marching through. When they return, their houses are completely free of, that means they're gone, their houses are completely free of rats, cockroaches, or other pests. Cockroaches are brown or black insects that like to live in warm, dark places. They're an example of a pest, and a pest is a creature that bothers or destroys other animals or pets. All right, now that I've learned about army ants, I wanna think about that first thing. What did I learn? Well, I learned a lot of things actually in this small amount of information. I learned that army ants can march in groups of up to a million. I was also surprised to learn that they can eat um, even tigers and horses and cows. And I was surprised to learn that army ants can come through people's houses and get rid of rats and cockroaches and other pests by eating them. Now I want to think about that second question. What is the most important thing to under understand and remember about army ants? Another way I could think about this is, if I had to say what this passage was about in just one sentence, what would I say? And I'm going to remind you, if you joined me for the lessons last week, you already know this sentence, but if you're new to our lessons this week, we're going to work on explaining our, the reasons behind our ideas by using this sentence stem. The reason I think this is. This is really important because we are going to have different ideas about what we think is the most important in these passages. And that is okay. It makes our discussions more interesting when we have different ideas, as long as we can explain where we got our ideas from using reasons. So here's what I think about the army ants one. I think the most important thing to understand and remember about army ants is that the army ants work together to do some amazing things. The reason I think this is, all of the other ideas in the passage, like how they form a bridge to get across a river, how they can eat a tiger, how they can clear out houses, those were all examples of how army ants can work together to do amazing things. What did you think were some of, was an important idea in this passage? Now, let's practice determining important ideas with another passage. This one is going to be about elephants. So let's get ourselves ready to read. What do you think you know already about elephants? When I have asked this question to my students, they've told me, I know that elephants have long trunks that they use to squirt water. I also know that they, I think I know that they live in families, and I've seen them do tricks at the circus before. We'll read the passage about elephants twice. The first time we're going to think about what we're learning about elephants, and then the second time we'll go back and we'll think about what is the most important thing to understand and remember. So we'll start by hearing the lifetime. A lifetime for an elephant is about 65 years. Elephants have feelings much like those you have. They make loud, joyful trumpeting sounds when they meet other elephants. They care for other elephants that are sick or injured. 
If a baby or friend dies, they show their sadness by refusing to eat or by moaning and crying. Moaning means kind of making a sad crying sound. Elephants are among the few animals that weep tears when they are very sad, very, very sad. Although elephants are the largest animals on land, they don't kill or bother other animals. When ponds and streams dry up, elephants use their trunks to dig down to water. When they finish drinking, they let other animals drink. Without water, these animals would die. All right, that was our first time. So, what interesting things have you learned about elephants? Think. And then if you have a turn and talk partner, go ahead and turn and talk. Otherwise, just keep thinking in your head. One thing that I learned that was the most surprising to me is that elephants weep, weep means cry. They actually cry tears when they're very sad. Now we're going to read this passage again. And this time, think about what do you think is most important to understand and remember about this passage? Or if you had to say what it's about in just one sentence, what would you say? A lifetime for an elephant is about 65 years. Elephants have feelings much like those you have. They make loud, joyful trumpeting sounds when they meet other elephants. They care for other elephants that are sick or injured. Injured means um, hurt, sick or injured. If a baby or friend dies, they show their sadness by refusing to eat or by moaning and crying. Elephants are among the few animals that weep tears when they are very, very sad. Although elephants are the largest animals on land, they don't kill or bother other animals. When ponds and streams dry up, elephants use their trunks to dig down to water. When they finish drinking, they let other animals drink. Without water, these animals would die. What do you think is most important to understand and remember in this passage? Don't forget to use our sentence stem, the reason I think this is. Turn and talk. Here's what I've heard from some of my students when we've had this discussion. Some students have said, I think an important idea in this passage is that elephants have feelings just like humans do. The reason I think this is, the passage says that elephants cry when an elephant they love dies. But other students have said, I disagree. I think an important idea is that elephants are gentle. The reason I think this is, the passage says even though they're really large, they don't hurt or harm other animals, and they actually help them by digging up water with their trunks so that other animals can get water. What do you think? I'd like you now, or after, or after you've finished watching this video, to write about what you think is the important idea in this passage. You can write this in your learning packet, in your student response book on page 64, or on uh, a piece of scratch paper. Here's what I wrote. I wanted to make sure that I had complete sentences and that I explained my reasoning. So I wrote, I think the most important idea is that elephants have feelings just like we do. The reason I think this is that elephants can cry when an elephant they love dies. You can pause the video to right now or wait until the end. Today, we practiced determining important ideas 
by reading about lifetimes of army ants and elephants and thinking to ourselves, what is the most important thing to understand and remember about these animals? Next time, we'll read another passage from the book and continue to write and talk and think about important ideas. For your IDR time today, I'd like you to please use our comprehension strategies as they make sense to you as you read. I am at the beginning, still kind of towards the beginning of this book that's called The Gauntlet. It's written by Karuna Riazi, and it's about a girl and her friends who get this, this mysterious game that ends up kind of coming to life and sucking them into it. It's kind of a fantasy book, and it reminds me a lot of the book and movie Jumanji. But at the part that I'm at right now, the author is doing a lot of description of what the game looks like. They're describing how the kids are um, getting ready to play the game and all of the things that are happening. And so which comprehension strategy do you think I might be using in this part? There's lots of description, so I'm practicing visualizing, especially because this book is a little bit tricky for me. There's some words that I don't necessarily understand. So when I visualize, it can really help me understand what's going on. Please practice using reading comprehension strategies in your IDR time today. Maybe you can especially focus on what important ideas you're learning in your texts. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your hard work at home. I miss my students a lot, and I know your teachers miss you too. I'm also very proud of the hard work that my students are doing, and I also know that your teachers are very proud of you too. I'll see you next time. Take care.